YouTube. Today, I wanted to uh, take a chance to show you guys uh, my stabilizer setup on my Eagle Talon 12. <laughs> dog. I wanted to give you guys uh, a glimpse today of my stabilizer setup on the Field and Stream Eagle Talon 12. This should work for any kayak with a front hatch um, opening, and if you have uh, access to actually reach the back, it should work there too. The brackets you're looking at here are actually flagpole holders. Um, I got these from Lowe's, and uh, um, on the back side within the hole are metal platings. I used as a, um, a custom way of fastening the back. These metal plates on the back, um, I cut to match the width of the brackets, and I pre-drilled them. Um, I didn't want to risk uh, pulling these brackets out in any way. Um, there are rubber washers on the underside. Um, on both sides actually keeps it sealed never had them leak um, stainless steel hardware obviously um, I spend a lot of time in salt water so I try to make sure I'm buttoned up I'm gonna put these stabilizers on and I'm gonna walk you guys through exactly uh, what I used to build them and how well they performed these flagpole holders I actually got at Lowe's and I thought ahead you know if I break one um, I would want to acquire more you know what, what happens if Lowe's stops selling this particular brand and I have drilled my kayak um to match those brackets so i did buy several uh packs of these uh flagpole holders just so i had an inventory of them should i need to replace them and one piece of this obviously you're noticing the contrast this this is not the original uh bracket or uh flagpole holder piece that amounts to this bracket they're you know they're different shade the reason for that um, because this is kind of like a galvanized like trash alloy um i did hit a rock on a river one day um the, the river current was pulling me pretty hard and it snapped off at the base here right here in this joint it broke it clean stressed in the video that i bought multiple ones of these for replacements i had these in the toolbox of my truck and was very once i was able to get back to my truck i, I was able to replace them without breaking the sweat um you know you don't want to run into obstructions uh pilings uh piers rocks with these um because they will break um but the pvc structure Though it does bend, they do not break. Um, let my size and my, my weight <clears throat> really be a testament uh, to how durable these are. What we're seeing here are lobster buoys, and this is by far the most expensive piece of this setup. These were about $5 a piece. I got these from a local bait shop here in Richmond. Um, they are, uh, sl I slid those over a three quarter inch piece of PVC um, and capped it on either end. Um, that three quarter inch PVC goes into a T bracket that goes out to a one inch piece of PVC. You can see there. This is a 45 uh, elbow. Um, and that one inch PVC runs all the way back to a reducer. This is a one inch to three quarter. And within this is a three quarter inch piece of PVC. Um, and I just fasten it tight and snug um, so that they're on there. Now, there is some natural play and I've actually learned that this uh, serves it well in water right it, it keeps you from having too much tension stand in this kayak in uh, open water um spent a lot of time on the chesapeake bay you know bigger water rough water white capping um without even breaking a sweat because these things had my back you know and uh <clears throat> it gives you a little bit of flexibility i don't transport it like this because i can take the whole works off if you loosen the bracket you can fold them up for clearance Try to do this with one hand. <clears throat> Gives you a little bit of a view, and they'll actually go all the way up as far as I want them to go. I roughly put in about fifty dollars to build these, which is you know far superior to the two three hundred dollar uh, rigs you can find on Amazon or elsewhere online. Um, I encourage anybody to give it a shot. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment below. Thanks, guys.